Hey, it's Josh Jacobs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Football Counselor. Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counselor. Today, we're talking about Joe Mixon and his fantasy football impact going into 2020. Big episode here. If you are considering grabbing Joe Mixon, I'm going to give you guys my verdict at the end on if he's safe to draft and if I would personally draft him for 2020 fantasy football. It's very important you pay attention because this guy's a late first round pick and you need to invest in the proper pick at the end of the first round. It's a big investment, guys. A first round pick, especially a second round pick. So you want to make the right decision. That's why I'm creating the Impact Series because the Impact Series is really going to help you guys. It's going to guide you guys making the right decision and drafting the right player in the right round. So you got to get the information on that specific player. Before I get into this, guys, again, make sure you smash the thumbs up and leave your fantasy questions below. And of course, guys, we are launching Fan to Fan Network. Finally, a voice, a real voice for sports fans, a voice that fans deserve. Guys, I am super excited. There is a link to Twitch below. Follow Twitch, guys. We're launching this summer. Fan to Fan, all the top NFL team influencers, guys, all of those guys that talk about a specific NFL team are going to be on Twitch, guys. This is going to be phenomenal, guys. This is a sneak peek to it. Let's, let, let's roll the clip, guys. I'm going to show you guys a sneak peek to fan to fan right now. Let's roll it. All right, guys, there is a quick sneak peek to fan to fan, guys. I am beyond, beyond excited for this. Make sure you guys are following on Twitch. If you don't have Twitch, create an account, guys. Get on it. Or if you guys are in the car, just go to Twitch, create an account, and follow FTFN. Okay, fan to fan network. Guys, I'm super excited about this. It's going to be epic. We are changing the game. All right, let's talk about Joe Mixon and his fantasy football impact going into 2020 fantasy football. Do you draft him? Do you do you not? Do we trust him? Well, we got to look at what, where Joe Mixon is sitting. Right now, he's currently sitting seventh on the Kinshipsis rankings amongst running backs. So the fantasy football RB rankings consensus, he's sitting seventh, okay? Now, that's pretty high. Last year, he finished, what, 13th in PPR in 2019, finishing an entire 16 games. Um, you know, sorry, finished, yeah, 13th in PPR, over 1,000 rushing yards. Sorry, yeah, not bad. 1,137, 1, 1, 4.1 yards per carry, five rushing touchdowns, and 278 attempts. Not bad. What I like to see, guys, you know it. I like to look at attempts, and he was up there. He was sixth in attempts, actually tied for fifth with Chris Carson, which is something that I absolutely adore. I love the attempts. I love the volume. The problem with Joe Mixon is, and it's been a problem for every single year, is that he doesn't really have a high ceiling. He's not really a high ceiling kind of guy. So what am I expecting out of Joe Mixon? Really, he's peaked, man. He's peaked, and he peaked a couple years ago, okay? He peaked back in 2018 with 243.4 fantasy points on 237 attempts. Now you're saying, well, Joe, they've got Joe Burrow now, Burrow now AJ Green's back. He's going to spread the offense, this and that. Listen, it's a suspect offense all around. AJ Green, Green coming off injury. They got T. Higgins in the second round. And what's weird, I, mean, I understand they needed a quarterback. That's understandable. But what really blows my mind is that they did not address the O line. They did not address the O line in the early rounds. And that is a problem to me. They went quarterback, uh, Burrow, they went uh, Higgins, and they went linebacker. What blows my mind is they didn't protect. Uh, Joe Burrow, they got this you know shiny new toy that is Burrow, but they didn't protect him. And a lot of people say, well, yeah, Joe Mixon, you know, there's slight improvements here and there on the O line. I get it. And Joe Mixon now with a new quarterback and offense, you know, there's a high ceiling, possibly. But again, guys, years to wow me, and I'm not really, really wowed, and I need to be completely wowed. He's only finished one season fully healthy. He only played 14 games the first two seasons he started. Again, finishing the first season completely back in 2019. And peaking at 1,168 rushing yards back in 2018, peaking at a total of eight rushing touchdowns total in that same year in 2018. I mean, I'm not seeing anything here that's like, oh my God, Joe Mixon's going to be the next, uh, you know, the next real big deal here. Like, I'm not. And and you're investing a early pick for him, like a late first round, early second in most drafts. And that's a big question mark. Again, I have a lot of question marks. And the biggest question mark to me in this entire situation is the suspect offense. Again, we got a rookie quarterback coming in, Joe Burrow. How is he going to gel with that offense? Is A.J. Green going to be the real deal? How good is T. Higgins? How good is Ross going to be Boyd? How good are those wide receivers going to be? I understand that Mixon is going to be the full workhorse running back. I understand he's going to get the volume. And I'm all about that. I really, really am. 
But Mixon as a player, a 6'1", 220, going into his fourth year, I understand he's young still, right? He's like 23 years old. I get it. But as I'm just not a fan. I don't see the ceiling. I don't, I'm, I'm not like with Barkley, man, like the sky's the limit. This guy could bust out a run for 100 yards, you know, get 20 touchdowns, a, you know, a season. You got Henry who had that big ceiling, big monster. He's going to get 20 rushing touchdowns, big ceiling, led in rushing yards. I, you know, I saw that. I saw that ceiling last year. That's why I said draft Henry as soon as you can. You know, I got him in the second round all my leagues last year. You got to see the ceiling with some players. And when I think Joe Mixon, I think, Safe, boring, and a possible, you know, upside, but decline. Like, I'm just, I'm not, like, I don't get, like, warm and fuzzy and excited. I'm like, I got to get Joe Mixon on my roster. I got to get Joe Mixon. He's the guy. Like, I don't feel that with Joe Mixon at all. Like, he doesn't get me excited. And again, and, and that was a feeling I had. Then I really dove into his stats today, and I'm just like, okay, that confirms exactly what I feel. Like, I'm just not seeing a huge ceiling. Like, peaking at, peaking at eight touchdowns. Like, eight eight and five, whatever that is, 13 plus four. Like Henry got that many touchdowns in one season, right? Like he got 16 touchdowns, like very similar to what Mixon has done in three years. Henry did last year in rushing touchdowns, right? And then you look at his receiving touchdowns and you're like, this guy's supposed to be a, a pass catching running back. He's, he's not really known as, a, but he can catch the ball, right? Peaking out at 43 receptions in 2018 as well on 55 targets. That's not exciting. Now, you could say, well, again, Burrow's going to come in, Joe, and he's going to feed him, Joe, and that's, but we don't know that. We don't really know. We haven't seen a, seen, seen a proven track record of these guys gelling and, you know, moving forward together and Mixon having this amazing ceiling. So I'm just not seeing that. So I'm just going to get like right to the verdict because I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Uh, I just want to give you guys a ton of value on this because when I'm talking about Joe Mixon, I feel like I am, I'm genuinely wasting time. He's not a kind of prospect that I really like. I like the high ceiling guys. So if you are looking at him, you must really love the Cincinnati Bengals. First of all, that team is suspect completely. So I'm I'm not going to trust them at all. It's the Bengals for crying out loud. So I'm going to stay away completely, far away. So who do you draft instead of Joe Mixon late first round? Again, I'm liking Todd Gurley. I'm liking, uh, you know, Josh Jacobs late late round there, you know, and you want to implement a robust RB. And I talk about this in the 16 round draft solution, guys. I'm beyond excited about my 16 round draft solution because I'm literally handing on a silver platter the solution to dominate fantasy football 2020. You guys need to get it. I'm telling you guys, you guys will thank me. Get the 16 round draft solution. And of course, get the impact series below. Click on it. You get all the videos for free on every running back. But when you're looking at Joe Mixon, guys, he comes with huge risk. He comes with huge, huge question marks and a lot of red flags. And when I, when I look at any player, especially a player late first round, especially any player from my roster, guys, I am, it's funny because you, you got the draft out and you got all these people. And I usually, you know, prior to me being an analyst, I used to play with casual fans. They, they were really hardcore into, into their teams and stuff, but they were casual at fantasy. They knew fantasy, but not on my level, right? So when we get to like the eighth or ninth round, you see these guys start fizzling out. Uh, looking at kickers and defenses. And I was actually doing a mock draft. I saw kickers and defenses come off really early. I saw defense come off in like the seventh round. I'm like, dudes, like you guys don't know what players are available. I'm literally selective and I'm very picky up until every round. I'm literally pinpointing. I'm at round 16 and I see people. I'm like, damn, I could have got that guy. I know he's a breakout. Like I'm seeing so much sleepers and talent late round. I wish I had more bench spots. And that's one thing, a fantasy football strategy for you guys and a tip. Make sure your commissioner pushes towards more bench spots because if you get 60 rounds, you're going to have a lot of sleepers you're going to want to stash on your bench because I know who the breakouts potentially could be and you want to load up that bench. So again, if I'm picky in the 16th round, I am sure as hell picky in the first couple rounds and there's no way I'm putting Mixon on my roster because of these reasons, guys. There's too much uncertainty and you want to limit that uncertainty, right? You only want to be as certain as possible based on the Cuddy system. Remember, consistency, upside, durability, depth, youth. You need all of that encompassed when you roster any player on your team. So be very selective. And for me, guys, you know, Joe Mixon isn't going to do it. He's not a guy I'm going to be personally rostering for Fantasy Football 2020. You need to be cautious. You need to stay away. Draft somebody else and go robust RB strategy, meaning 
load up on RBs with minimal committees and with minimal question marks in the first, third, or fourth round. Guys, you're going to thank me. I'm telling you because you don't want you don't want to end up with a Philip Lindsay or Jordan Howard, you know, as your RB one or RB two. You don't want those question marks at running back. You can have some question marks at wide receiver, but you don't want those question marks at running back. And there's a ton of wide receiver ones you can get after the fifth round. I assure you guys, T. Y. Hilton, Diggs, Cooks, McLaurin, Debo. There's a ton of guys. Shark. So many guys, guys, Robbie Anderson, when I'm when when drafted in one of my leagues, he could really be connecting this year uh, with him in Bridgewater. Tons of wide receivers available. Tons, 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 tons. I can go on forever. You know, receivers for days, okay? Uh, quarterbacks for days. Load up all those running backs early. I assure you that is the strategy and the hack for Fantasy Football 2020. But I explained that all in 16 rounds at thefantasyfootballcounts.com. Also, guys, make sure you guys are following on Twitch here Get on Fan to Fan Network, guys. The stream is coming very soon, coming this summer. Beyond excited. Join the movement, guys. Finally, finally, a voice that fans deserve. I'm beyond excited. Follow Fan to Fan on Insta as well, at Fan to Fan Network. Beyond excited, guys, to put all these influencers in one place for you. Make sure you guys subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and leave your questions below. I'll see you guys next video, and stay away from Joe Mixon.